Hi, my name is Eric, and I want to give you some advice that I learned from capturing the 2017 solar eclipse. So in 2017, I went out to record the Great American Eclipse, and I had about $5,000 worth of camera equipment with me. I essentially didn't get anything worthwhile from the event. Uh, I haven't looked through this footage in about four years, and I'm going to be showing you all the ways that I screwed up when I captured this. Now you might be saying, if I haven't looked through this footage in about four years, how do you know I'll be able to show you anything worthwhile from this video? Well, I just finished editing what you're about to see and man, I messed up so much and I'm going to show you all the ways that I screwed up. Anyway, hopefully you learned from some of my mistakes. If you don't want to watch any further, here's the main piece of advice I'll give you. Download an audio recorder for your phone and right before totality starts, hit record on that audio app. All right, so let's jump in and see all the ways that I screwed this thing up. Let's see what we did. So it's really dark and you can only see a sliver of the sun right there. Right as the moon completely blocked the sun, I had a solar filter and I just uh, removed it as quick as I could. Uh, you'll see it come off right there. Uh, you can see the camera shaking a whole bunch. So that's not ideal. This also doesn't do justice of what it actually looked like in real life. Uh, I guess another issue uh, that you want to be aware of is get the framing more centered up than I did. Uh, I had a really bad tripod with me that day, which you can see as I was adjusting the exposure, the whole thing was shaking. Uh, this frame is really bad, so I'd recommend shooting wider than you think you'd want to in case you don't have a star tracker. Uh, because moving the shot will, in my opinion, make the footage almost worthless. Yep, and then you can see me messing with a tripod in the frame. So all that footage right here is completely unusable. And really, I should have just been looking at the eclipse with my own eyes because it's way cooler than seeing it on camera. I don't think you see this quite this much detail. At least it doesn't look this zoomed in in real life. Uh, but still, real life is way cooler than this. And here comes the sun. And I'll probably put the solar filter back on in just a second. Go ahead and zoom back out to fit. And this brings up another good point. This is what seeing an eclipse at like 99% looks like versus, uh, you know, 100. That's a completely different experience. It's almost not even worth looking up for seeing at 99%. Then it looks like I recorded probably the rest of the event until the moon completely went out of view of the sun. Uh, I think this is kind of all unusable because I don't have a star tracker and the camera just moved so much it wasn't worth doing anything with. I will say the coolest thing that I probably got from this is hearing the audio of what Lauren and I said whenever the eclipse happened. Uh, if you want to hear some of that, I'll go ahead and share it with you. No. Oh, look at that ring. All right, you can take them off. Look at it. Oh Holy my shit. God. That's amazing. <laughs> this is crazy. That's awesome! Wow. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> wow. I didn't think it would be this awesome. Wow. That is beautiful. I'm getting a picture of it. I... Uh, You've only got about two minutes of this. I wouldn't bother. So after seeing the footage from the GH4, uh, my takeaway is shoot wider than you think you want to because if you move the camera, the footage isn't very good. Um, also, probably the coolest thing I got from that uh, was the audio. It was really neat to hear what my wife and I said during the eclipse, uh, you know, looking back on that, what was that six or seven years later? Uh, you just don't remember that stuff in the moment. And it was also super cool to, that she pointed out that there was like no audio really from the animals or insects during the eclipse. And then, you know, 30 seconds after the sun started coming back out, you could hear the animals again. Uh, during the moment, it seems like you don't really remember that stuff at all. Uh, yeah, let's see what I screwed up on with the Panasonic GH5.
Okay, so I think I shot this entire thing in slow motion. As you can see, I kind of screwed this one up also by reframing the camera. Uh, I won't do that again this time. Uh, but I think the eclipse lasted about three minutes last time. And when I shot this in slow motion, it basically made the footage last what, 20 minutes long. 20 minutes worth of footage instead of three minutes. Uh, but yeah, let's see how this actually looked as I took the solar filter off. Yeah, I just don't know any way to get rid of the bouncing when you take the filters off. Uh, but if you're not shooting in slow motion, the bounce should be really, really short. Yeah, interestingly, this camera seems to be less noisy than the uh, camera shooting in 4K. I assume it's just because this is a newer camera. Uh, you can see, uh, I think this little planet over there. We'll go ahead and jump around to the end of the footage as the moon quits blocking the sun to see, to see if it was even worth shooting in slow motion for that. I mean, that's kind of neat. I guess you can see where there's maybe some valleys in the sun there. It looks like I'm starting to bounce the camera. I assume I'm about to put the solar filters back on it. I mean, this part's kind of neat where you see it brighten up super slow. I don't know if there's going to be a whole lot of footage like this that exists out in the wild. I mean, this part is pretty cool. And unusable. So the problem with shooting slow motion on that camera, I think I was shooting like 160 or 180 frames a second. Um, it won't record audio when you're shooting in slow motion. And I think the audio of hearing Lauren and I talk was the coolest part of the footage from the GH4. So my biggest takeaway after seeing the GH5 footage, which I shot in slow motion, was well, slow motion is only kind of cool for the very beginning and the very end of the totality part. Uh, for the stuff in the middle, there's not a whole lot going on and you miss all the audio, which frankly I think is the coolest part of the entire event looking back. So on to the drone shot to see what I got from that. All right, so here's the drone sequence. For this one, I locked the exposure down because I wanted to see uh, basically just how much darker everything got during the event. Um, looks like I had this thing flying for 10 minutes and 48 seconds. I'm not going to play this in real time. I can post it on YouTube, but uh, we'll scrub through it if you just want to see what this whole thing looked like. Uh, that got pretty dark. I'll full screen this. Oh yeah, you can see uh, some of the uh, lights come on during the day. Yeah, it doesn't get completely dark, but you know, it looks like sunset. And this was probably the most interesting thing I saw from this entire clip. I'll go ahead and put this at 100%. For some reason, someone shot off a firework during this. Like They thought that I guess a firework was going to be cooler than seeing the eclipse, or maybe it was a photo opportunity. I bet a photo would look pretty cool if they actually posted that, but... Man, it seems kind of like a waste of an eclipse firing off a firework, which, I mean, looking back on this footage I shot, I don't know, shooting footage also is kind of a waste. Go ahead and scrub through this some more. Man, it gets bright really quick. Let's see, it's at the 444 mark, and then by... What, 5.58, so a minute and 15 seconds, like it goes from being dark to daylight again. My takeaway after seeing the drone clips was that footage is probably more unique than the other two shots I got, which actually showed the sun. I just don't think many people probably shot drone footage of how the light changes on the earth. So looking back, that was probably worth putting the drone up in the air for. Now I'll go ahead and take a look at the GH2 footage, which was actually just a raw uh, camera clips. It's been years since I looked through this, so we'll see if anything was even worth uh, processing at this point. It looks like I probably started shooting these before the 
moon started blocking the sun. I will skip down a little bit to see what is happening. Yeah, there you can see the moon going for the sun some. Uh, it looks like I have the same issue with this camera as I did with the other ones where I had to reposition the camera as the earth rotates. Uh, let's skip ahead to when totality takes place. So this is getting pretty close. Yeah, I don't even see anything on this one. This looks like it missed totality. Uh, did I not even capture it? This is before. I never even took the solar filter off. Change the exposure. It's just completely black. Well, that's pretty disappointing if I uh, didn't record or didn't capture totality at all. I'll mess with the exposure again. Yeah. You can see the sun coming back right there. It looks like I may have completely uh, forgotten to have taken the solar filter off and didn't get any photos of totality. Let's see uh, what photo this was. It's 210.797. Yeah, I'm just looking at the uh, date modified on these to see if I like skipped over a minute or so, but uh, it looks like, yeah, I completely forgot to take the filter off and missed seeing what this actually looks like. So that's pretty disappointing seeing that I completely screw up the photos whenever I shot the last eclipse, but hopefully you can learn from my mistake. And I mean, taking off the solar filter was, you know, as easy as doing that. I just, I guess somehow forgotten the heat of the moment. And speaking of solar filters, uh, it's probably going to be way too late to order anything now for this. But uh, if you want to see what I've been talking about, you basically have these uh, sheets of plastic that are super dark. Whenever I made them, uh, I got my camera. Uh, I used some cardboard. I uh, cut out a strip of cardboard, wrapped it around the camera, and then you can see I taped uh, two ends together. And then I cut out a piece of that plastic in a circle that fits around the lens and just taped a whole bunch of uh, strips of tape around it so it fit on. And that way you could also take it off super easy. I don't know if these are supposed to be good for multiple years or they expire, but I'll reuse these ones on Monday. So after going through all the photos and footage I took of the 2017 eclipse, here's five things I wouldn't do and three things that I would do for the 2024 eclipse or any future ones. The first is don't record the eclipse without a solar filter. I've seen horror stories of lenses and camera sensors getting destroyed because people didn't use them. Uh, basically a camera's lens uh, will focus you know the sun on one little part of the camera sensor and it can burn a hole in the sensor or I've also seen pictures of aperture blades getting destroyed from them being melted so make sure you use a solar filter if you record things before totality. Don't number two don't shoot super zoomed in. You want to shoot wider than you think you might need to. The earth rotates relatively quickly, especially if the camera's lens is zoomed in a whole lot. You know, you might think you'll get some great shots, but it's likely the sun will go out of frame before the eclipse is over. Don't number three, don't touch the camera during totality if you're shooting a time lapse or a video of it. If you move your camera, it's going to shake a whole lot and your eclipse essentially ruined. Don't number four, don't shoot the eclipse in slow motion. That halo effect around the moon, it seems like it might be cool to watch it in slow motion later, but the light doesn't really seem to move or dance enough to make that worthwhile. And lastly, don't number five, which might be the most important one. Don't forget to take off your solar filter during totality if you use one. As you saw from my photos, the photos during totality were just black because I, for some reason, completely forgot to take this thing off. Now that we got all the don'ts out of the way, Here's three things that I would do when seeing the solar eclipse. See the eclipse with your own eyes. Cameras, at least at the moment, will never do justice compared to what seeing this in real life looks like. It's an absolutely unbelievable experience and it's gonna be over before you know it. The second thing that I would do is if you wanna capture something from the event is record the audio. If you wanna relive the experience you know, 20 years later, hearing your reaction along with the other people's reactions that you're with is gonna be a whole lot more meaningful than any photos that you might take of the eclipse. 
And the third thing I would do is take a photo of whoever you're with right before totality. It'll still be pretty dark, so you'll get the same sort of effect. But you'll have this photo that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world that shows what you were doing that day and who you were with. And speaking of unique photos, someone's almost certainly going to be taking a better photo of the eclipse than you're going to be able to. I mean, just going online, you have access to photos from the best photographers in the world. And lastly, seeing an eclipse is kind of a bittersweet moment. It might seem like a strange analogy, but this is kind of like being given a superpower, but you only have three or four minutes to use it. No matter how long you try to make those few minutes last, you'll never be able to accomplish everything in those moments that you want to. And those few moments that you're about to experience are going to be one of the coolest things you're ever going to experience in your life. So I hope you enjoy the eclipse this Monday. And if you happen to want to take photos, hopefully you can learn a few things from my mistakes. But if you don't want to take some photos and just enjoy the experience, hopefully there's good weather and enjoy this once in a lifetime experience.